crafters all over have agreed that Silhouette Studio is a better, more robust program than Cricut Design Space. So I want to take the time to teach you how to use Silhouette Studio, whether you just got your machine, you're brand new to using a cutting machine, or if you use Cricut Design Space with your Cricut and are fed up with all the issues you're having, I want to show you how to use Silhouette Studio to successfully make your projects. This is going to be a multiple part video series and we're going to learn by making because I think that we learn best by doing. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future videos because we're going to make simple vinyl decals. We'll make a more complex vinyl decal. We're going to do some HTV for shirts. We're going to learn how to do print and cut and I'm going to show you how the software works along the way. So hopefully by the end of these five videos, you'll feel very comfortable making whatever it is that you wanna make. Today, we're gonna install the program, we're gonna upgrade our software, and we're gonna make a simple vinyl decal, learning how to install fonts, how to change up the fonts, and everything that goes along with it. If you're new here, my name is Allison, and I upload videos once or twice a week teaching you all new crafts and techniques so you can make things on your own. The goal of the channel is to provide you the most streamlined and quick information so you don't have to spend a lot of time learning and you can spend more time making. So if that sounds like your jam, hit that thumbs up and let's get started. In order to use Silhouette Studio with your Cricut, you do need to upgrade to Business Edition, but I highly recommend that everybody does that anyway. It is a one-time payment. I will show you how to do that in just a minute. Specifically today, I'm going to show you how to find a new font, cut it in your vinyl, and add it to a glass wine glass. Now, these are a dollar from a Dollar Tree and make really nice practice cups. So the materials you're going to need are permanent vinyl. I'm using Oracle 651. You need a surface to decal. You can choose whatever surface you want. Any plastic or glass surface will work. You're going to need transfer tape and you're going to need your silhouette. So I'm going to link all the supplies you need down below and I will talk through this as I go through the video. Let's head over to my computer and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is download our software. So you're gonna to go to silhouetteamerica.com and hit software and download. And you're going to pick the version, whether you have a Mac or Windows and pick which one you want, download it, unzip it, and get it fully installed. I'm not gonna walk through that piece. I'm hoping that you guys can figure that part out on your own. Once it's downloaded, you can open Silhouette Studio. For this video, I'm using version 4.4, which is the most current as of February 14th, 2021. So the first thing I want to walk you through is this page setup. So over on the right, on the very top, that is the page setup menu. You can change the mat size. So it automatically opens the 12 by 12 cutting mat. And then your actual workspace, you can change. It has pre-made stuff. So if you wanted it to be 12 by 12, sometimes water slide paper is like A4 size or letter size. So you can change the value. Um, you can change the side, size of your mat. It can show a print border. So if you are printing from here, which I do a lot and I will show you later, you can turn it on and then the cut border here here is in red. Um, just know that like everything has to be inside that cut border if you want to get it cut. The other thing that I change quite a bit is the transparency. So if you put it at 100%, you can see these marks that each represent one inch. Um, and you can either have it fully transparent, partially transparent, or not transparent at all. It doesn't change the way things design. It just sometimes it's nice to see the grid so you can see if you're using scrap vinyl, certain sizes, it gives you an idea of the size of your decal. The only other thing that I use in the page setup menu is the registration marks and this and print bleed will be something we visit when we start doing our print and cut stickers. Silhouette has a store with designs. I rarely use it but you can access it through studio and there's also a library. I can't even log into mine right now, so I never use it, but you certainly can save stuff in there, but I highly recommend that when you have a design, you go to file, save as, and save to hard drive, and save it somewhere on your computer, in your Google Drive folder, or wherever you wanna save your designs. Save it somewhere on your computer, and then have that folder backed up somewhere else. I personally use Carbonite to automatically back up all my files, but you can use Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, whatever you want. So the other thing that we need to do is, is upgrade our software. So if you go to help and go to um, upgrade Silhouette Studio, that's where you're gonna upgrade. Now, now you're gonna wanna purchase your license from Swing Design. They have the best price and I will put a link in the description box. Um, that'll take you right to 
what you need to do. You're going to get, you're going to want to get an instant code to just go from Silhouette Studio Basic, which is free, to Designer Edition that gives you all of the capabilities of Silhouette Studio. It is a one-time purchase of $60 and it is well, well worth it. So I will put a link down below. So you're gonna get a code and you're gonna type that in when it asks you to upgrade. You're gonna, you can read more about the different levels of software, but if you're using Silhouette with your Cricut, you have to have Business Edition, and it is well worth it for everybody to spend that $60, I promise. I upgraded a while ago and have never regretted having it, and it is just a one-time fee. So once you're upgraded, we're just going to type in a simple name. So this A is our typing option. So you click the A and click anywhere on your mat and type something in. So I'm going to type in my name. Right now I have this basic Arial font, which is super boring. So I want to change the font. If you've never downloaded a font before, there are so many out there that I highly recommend. I get most of my fonts from Creative Fabrica or the Hungry JPEG. I will put links to both below. In both of them, you can just go look at the fonts and decide which one you like. A lot, they have like $1 deals a lot. They have freebies every week. You can get them for a super, super low cost. And that includes commercial rights. So if you wanna sell any of your things, you have to have the commercial rights to the font. So I have a membership to Creative Fabrica, which is amazing. And I can just download anything I want for my, I pay monthly and I can download any font or file that I want. It's amazing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the font that you want and press download. And whether, you have a Windows computer or a Mac computer, it's going to look a little bit different, but you do need to unzip the file that you downloaded and you're going to open up the folder. This has multiple fonts in one file. So I'm gonna take all of the open type fonts and open them and press install. And you're installing these on your computer so you can access this in any program that you use. I don't really know the difference between open type and true type, so, but you only need to do one of them. You don't need to do both. So I'm just gonna pick the three open type fonts, open them, press install, and then they're installed on my computer. But you do need to close out Silhouette Studio and reopen it in order for your fonts to appear. So to type out a font, you're going to press the A button, click anywhere and type whatever it is that you wanna type. Again, for this project, we're just gonna make a simple decal with our name on it. So once you click your name, you can go up to the top and you can see the font and you can scroll and find whatever font that you're looking for. Now the one we just downloaded was called Lily Rose. So I'm gonna go down to the L's and I have a lot of fonts and it's going to bring up my name. There's a couple things I want you to note. You can see where the, these lines overlap. You do not want to cut it like that. So in a few minutes, I'm gonna show you what to do, but let's first see what glyphs are available. So you can see on this file that it's got like swirlies on the end. Those are called glyphs. Some have hearts, some have multiple different things, but those are a fun way to spice up your letters. So what you're going to do is go over to the right side and it's called the text style pattern. And you're going to go up to the top where you see this G and that's for glyphs. And now you can see all of the different letters you can change. So it always starts out with the basics, but my name ends in with an N. So I'm going to see if I can get an N with some sort of swirl going on at the end. So you can see, you can do an N at the beginning and one at the end. So it types, it, it, you wanna be in your text and when you press the letter, letter, it'll come up. So I'm gonna delete the N before it. And you can change the A, you can do, you know, whatever you want. If I put the A at the beginning, keeping it all lowercase, right? That's what it would look like. I'm gonna leave mine like this. Okay, and you can play around with this till it looks the way you like it. I don't want it to cut like this. In order to resize, I just also drag and drop. So right now you can see that it is 4.2 inches wide and one inch tall. So you'll wanna resize it and that's gonna depend on where you're putting it. So measure the space where you want your decal and resize it to be the right size. So before we can cut this, we need to do what is called a weld. 
if you cut it like as like it is right now, each one of these overlaps is going to cut and it does not look good that way. If you have cursive letters, a script font, you want to weld. So there are keyboard shortcuts, but the best way for me to tell you is to right click and press weld. So now you can see that where they overlap, it has made them into one image. And then if you have multiple boxes, that means they're now different groups. So if I move this, my name, the, the dot on the I is not going to move with it. So at, when you, after you weld, you're going to right click and press group. That's going to group everything together as one image. So now you can see that my name is, it's ready to cut. So before we do that, I'm going to show you how to change the color. Because it doesn't matter what color you choose, you you are picking the vinyl, like the physical vinyl that you're going to cut is going to be a specific color. So I tend to make the image in my computer that same color just to make a connection. But you're going to go to the top left, um, all the way to the left where you see like a whole box. Right now it's clear. If I change the color or select your name and then change the color. You can change it to whatever color you want. The other thing you see is that it is outlined in red. You can change the outline color in the menu next to it. I always keep mine red. So I'm not gonna go too much into outline color, but I sometimes change it. I don't know why I always keep it red, I just do. Um, and then I'm gonna send it to my silhouette. If you have a Cricut, at this point, you're gonna make it the right size whatever size you want to cut. You're going to file, save as to hard drive. Now we should all be saving this. So I'm just going to make my name and I'm going to save it as a silhouette file. The other thing you can do if you wanted to use this with your Cricut, you're going to need to change it to an SVG. And remember you need business edition to do that. So you can save it as an SVG and then you can open it, open that SVG file with your Cricut. So if you're if you're not using a Cricut because you have silhouette like me, I'm going to show you how to cut this. So my name right now is up in the top left corner. That means it's going to cut on my mat on the top left corner. This is a, a visual of your mat and where it's going to print or where it's going to cut. So you can just use a small piece in the top left or you can just cover the whole thing and cut it later. But it, you can move this around on your whole mat and that's where your that's where your machine is going to cut it. So you're going to go up to the top and go to send. There's more than one way to do most things in Silhouette Studio. So if you watch another video, somebody might do it a different way and that's okay too. This is just the way I like to do it. So I'm going to go to line and this is where it'll cut by whatever outline you have. So if you have, let's try this. If you had another one, I'm just going to copy and paste and change the outline to black and go to send, you'll see them both come up here. If I don't want to cut that one, I'm going to uncheck the button and I don't have to cut it. So sometimes there's benefit to doing that. And then you can choose from the drop down menu what your settings are going to be. So they have pre-made settings. So you can go to Vinyl Oracle 651 and you can see if that works for you. So you're gonna put your vinyl on your cutting mat with the shine, the color side up. I like to use these Nakapa mats from Amazon, but you can use the Silhouette mats as well. These are just over time better and less expensive, so I highly recommend them. So, once you get your vinyl on, my vinyl, again, is gonna cut just in this top left, but this is just the size scrap that I'm, go I'm using, so I'm gonna go with it. So to install your mat, you are going to line up the left edge with this line right here. So your mat is under the rollers and then you're going to press load. And it's going to load your mat into the machine. Once you have your vinyl placed, you can go to send and I like to cut my outline is red, so the only color that's going to show up here is red. And I'm going to choose from the drop down menu, and I'm going to choose Vinyl Silhouette Oracle 651. 
And if this is your very first time cutting vinyl, you need to do this test cut. Okay, so hit test. All it does is cut like a little triangle and a square in the top left corner, and you can see if the settings work. If the settings don't work, you're going to adjust your force and, spe and speed accordingly. So my current settings are blade one, force 10, and speed five. If it's not cutting enough, you can increase the force. If it cut too far, you can decrease the force, or if the force isn't working, then you can move to switching the blade depth. So I know my settings work for my vinyl, so when I'm after I do my test cut, just to be sure, I'm going to press send and it's gonna to send to my silhouette. So I just take scissors and cut around my vinyl decal. Don't cut your actual name. This is this process is called weeding. You can also use the hooks or a pin pen. So my favorite weeding tool are these sharp tweezers and I will link them down below. So what you're gonna do is just grab the corner and peel away vinyl you don't need okay smaller decals are harder so thicker fonts especially when you're first starting are better so then we're going to weed out the insides of the letters that i don't need and you have your decal I buy this roll of transfer paper on Amazon and I cannot recommend it enough. You need to find a good transfer tape, otherwise you're going to be so frustrated when things don't work. So I highly, highly, highly recommend this transfer tape. So I cut it just a little bit bigger than my design. And you can use transfer tape more than once. So once you're done doing one decal, you do not need to throw it away. You're going to place your transfer tape on top of your decal. I like to sort of sandwich it like this, put it in the middle and let it fall to the sides. And then I use a squeegee tool to get it nice and stuck to the vinyl. If you have any trouble getting your vinyl off your transfer tape, try peeling the backing away instead, or you might need to revisit your cut settings, or you might need to just re-squeegee to make sure it's good and stuck. Okay. So I am just going to apply it to this glass cup right here, put my name right on. I like to start in the middle. Make sure it's as straight as you can. Some people will fill it up with water so you have a line, but I'm just gonna eyeball it and hope for the best. Okay, so I start in the middle and then push it out sideways. And I use my squeegee tool to get it nice and stuck. Then you can peel away your transfer tape. And you can always go back over it if you need to. See, like this came up a little bit, so I'm just gonna stick it down with my hand. Okay, and that's how you add a vinyl decal. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create an offset and create more intricate designs. So join me in the next video.
So once you're done, you should wait a few days for it to cure. It does take um, a few days for this vinyl to really cure up. And after that, it is permanent. So you can use this wine glass as you want. They should be hand washed. Um, they should be hand washed and dried immediately. So I wouldn't put it in the dishwasher. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own design that is a little bit more complex, how to do an offset and how to put it on. In the next, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create an offset and create more intricate designs. So join me in the next video.